All right. Uh, so I, I've left this alone long enough that it did an autosave, which means I just need to come back over and turn my edit topology back on uh, with my Z-Sphere selected. And we can continue working our way along these features. So the, the bake is actually going to be pretty good. Like the, the detail that gets picked up by the Substance Painter or whatever whatever you want to use, I'm going to be using Substance Painter, it's going to accommodate a lot of these gaps and like all the stuff here where we're, we're trying to truncate. Like that's a pretty big, big bend there. So my original idea is not going to work. And since I've got to kind of be a little closer to that point there anyway, I may as well zoom in and get a little bit more articulate with it. So I'm going to be in draw mode and hold alt and click on that point. Go ahead and terminate that there. We have our flat surface there and then I can just try a point there and we'll see. We'll see if that works. Now I need to move this over, like bring this edge across. And we'll do that in just a moment. I kind of want to take a look at how, what this bend looks like and whether or not I need to include that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we'll just add an edge loop there. Something like this. It may be necessary. To go all the way there with it, which means I need to modify some stuff that's already here. And you can pretty easily add, that's a bit of a gap there. You can, you can add verts to edges just by clicking on them. Assuming they're not super deep, if they're like buried under the high poly, uh, ZBrush can have a little bit of trouble finding them. And then we'll just kind of move this one over here a bit. So this is a, I have to tap the W key, which goes to move mode so that I can actually move the camera. Otherwise it's going to try to draw a line to wherever, uh, wherever I happen to be clicking. And this is kind of an important point here. Whenever you're working on the, the center line, I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this stuff. You have to draw, you have to begin your draw on the center and go out. Otherwise you run into problems. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I must have turned symmetry off. Hold on a second. Tap the X key. So if I start at the center and I draw my way out, looks like there's something weird going on here. Oh, you know what? So I, this is a, uh, it's going to be a bigger hassle to fix, uh, but worth demonstrating. So this right here, the issue is I, I basically, I must have tapped the X key at some point. So my retop isn't symmetrical and that's going to be a, a, like a full stop kind of situation. I'm actually, I'm surprised that I hit it, but somewhat pleased, uh, hit it this early anyway. It's not super uncommon. So I'm just going to tap a to go into preview mode and then uh, solo here so that we can uh, take a look at the geometry. So what I'm going to want to do is basically just delete half of it, mirror it over, and then kind of re-import it as topology. So now that it's in preview mode, I can just hit make polymesh 3D. I know just based on how my, my ZBrush scene is, is set up that I can do a mirror and weld, and it's going to copy from this side and paste it to this side. Let's just confirm, right? But if for some reason you don't have that, like if it's um, the geo that you want is on this side, then you just need to go down to your deformations panel, which is right here, and you do a mirror, and it'll just be kind of a, a general flip, and then you can do your own mirror and weld. So because mine is already correct, I'm not going to do that. But now that I've got this here as a separate subtool, or I guess this is technically a different tool, what I can do is with my Z-Sphere selected, I just hop back over, you can see this one's got no numbers up here, and this one's got 97, that's how we know that uh, this is the one I was just working on. Also, I can just turn solo off. Um, what I can do is I'm going to uh, go back into my retop by hitting A. I'm going to go to delete topology, turn off edit topology, and then I, my select topo becomes available and I can just grab that geometry. So that's my most recent geo uh, in my, uh, my tool list here. 
And so now if I just turn on edit topology, that problem is resolved. So a thing to be aware of, it's pretty easy to do. You just gotta remember where all that stuff is. So uh, let's see, let's make sure, okay, so my symmetry is definitely back on now. So what I was gonna show you is if you are drawing points at the center line, you wanna make sure that you actually click on the center line. Because if you don't, this is what'll happen. Like if I, if I grab out here and then click in and connect it, what happens is you get two points here. And that's not a problem until you go to, to adjust it, right? So like if I wanted to move this, make sure it's unmasked, I can do that and it'll always be stuck there right on the surface and very easy to work with. But if I draw in from the outside, uh, typically what it'll do, and maybe in this case it's not gonna do it, but what you may see is it'll pop up or pop below the surface. It actually like launches up a significant distance and it'll never snap down. So that's just a thing to be aware of. It's possible that, that um, well, I don't know, because I've, I've got some other things here that were set up correctly that it's working properly. But just, to, uh, yeah, just if you do see that behavior, what you wanna do is you, you just wanna delete your center points and then just re redraw them at the center rather than coming in from one side or the other to the center. And it's important to try to keep this stuff as evenly spaced as possible. That way you get the smoothest transition over these forms. Okay, we'll just kind of continue on here. So there's a little bit of a gap there. You could make an argument for probably just scooting this stuff out a bit, just to capture a little bit more of that, uh, that curvature here. And then I'm gonna, I don't really have a place to stick this stuff in terms of like a point. That's probably okay. But this is a good example of what I'm talking about with the high poly, a thing that you might want to adjust on the fly. Like that little hole there could potentially cause issues in the bakes. So I'm just gonna make some simple adjustments here and move it up. So I'm gonna just grab any other subtool, tap the Q to be in draw mode, and I think I'll move this guy. So I'm gonna highlight it. Uh, actually, this one I've made, this one is already at the high poly level. That doesn't really matter. And we'll just grab it and scoot it up. And I think that looks fine, right? So that would have been more of a hassle if I was, if I was, uh, you know, in some other Cool. Of course, now I've got to go find my, there we go, my Z-sphere. And we can move these points down back into that crevice fairly safely. Or I guess there's some curvature there that we may want to keep. So we can just do something kind of simple like this. And it's also not a bad idea to... Uh, Kind of look at the features that you're heading into, right? So right now, I didn't need all that much to describe the top of this, but I'm going to need a significant amount to describe what's happening here. And it's a good idea to kind of let the more expensive geo dictate what's happening with the less expensive geo, or the more complicated geo might be a better way to put it. And there's a there's a trick that we can use. I don't know how these are set up exactly. Uh, let's see if I can reconstruct the subdivision on them. So that looks like they've been dynameshed or whatever. That's not a big deal. I'm just gonna retop it. Sometimes, like in this case, maybe with these, yeah. So we've got a primitive under there and we can use we can use some of that geometry to sort of get a head start on, on the retop for that section. Although it looks like it might be procedurally generated. So I'll probably just go over the top of that as well. Anyway, okay, so I guess we're about at time. So we'll pick this up in the next one.